With me is the Afghan envoy to India to talk about uh, the relationship and many other things, including the humanitarian support uh, being uh, sent by India. So welcome to Vion and thanks for speaking to Vion. My first question to you is uh, your reaction to the humanitarian support India is planning to send to the Afghan people, almost uh, 50,000 metric ton of wheat. Thank you, Siddhant. Uh, yes, India his time and uh, again proved to be uh, a close and reliable friend of the Afghan people and stood by us uh, at, at a difficult time. The generous act of uh, helping us with 50,000 metric ton of wheat, uh, with life-saving medicines and uh, half a million COVID vaccines is something that we greatly needed at time of crisis and we are grateful for, for this assistance and support. But, sir, there are certain challenges uh, coming given the fact that the support is uh, uh, being sent uh, via Vaga border over, o over, o over land route Pakistan and, and, of course, Afghanistan. What do you have to say about that? And also, do you expect more such humanitarian support in future? Uh, yes, that, that was something that uh, was greatly discussed um, uh, by by uh, the Afghan embassy and the Indian government. Uh, and the quickest route that we found was Pakistan. Uh, it take us a rather a short period of time to get this uh, much needed assistance to Afghanistan quite quickly. Um, so I hope that uh, Pakistan uh, would uh, continue to assist us as they have indicated that they would allow this convoy to transit through Pakistan. Uh, I hope that uh, that spirit uh, would continue um, in Islamabad to allow uh, these li life-saving drugs uh, uh, and, and wheat to flow into Afghanistan. The need is dire. Uh, the World Food Program estimates that around 9 million people require urgent food assistance. By the end of uh, uh, next year, there would be 3 million plus mal malnourished uh, children who would have already gone through food shortages. So the need is, is, is huge, uh, and I hope that more countries in the region and globally would come and alleviate the, surf, the suffering of Afghan people. There were a billion dollar pledged, uh, almost a billion euro pledged by the international community in Europe last month. I hope more and more assistance would come uh, to help our people at this difficult time. Mm -hmm. So how difficult situation is in Afghanistan, especially in the national capital, Kabul, with the onset of the winter? Uh, if you can tell us about the situation on the ground, especially the people uh, who, of course, uh, are suffering because of uh, the winter as well. Well, as, um, as you rightly put uh, out that the winter is approaching rather fast and uh, um, most banks are not operating as, as uh, they were doing it in the past. Uh, people are leaving in large numbers um, for many countries in the region uh, and, and for Western capitals, Western countries. Uh, people are not getting paid on time. Uh, there is little business activities. Uh, teachers, doctors are not being paid. So there is a humanitarian crisis. There is uh, unfolding uh, economic crisis. Uh, it is a catastrophic situation uh, right across the country. Uh, the new uh, Taliban regime hasn't been uh, recognized by any country. Uh, almost uh, after four months, uh, so it's 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 a difficult situation for ordinary Afghan people are faced with uh, with a lot of challenges, uh, and it's time for the international community to come uh, rescue and support uh, the Afghan people who are facing uh, a difficult time uh, after having 20 years of rather uh, a stable period in their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, so what more would you expect from New Delhi, especially in terms of visas as well, because recently we know the Indian government said that 200 e-visas have been given, but uh, talking about the students as well who are stuck in Afghanistan, Afghan students studying in India, uh, if you can give us any kind of expectation from the embassy to the Indian government. Well, we require um, a lot of assistance from India in terms of um, humanitarian assistance at this stage. But together with the humanitarian assistance, we also need uh, visa support 
India so far has been kind to issue Afghans with 200 visas. But for a nation of around 40 million people, that is five visas per million people. That's certainly not enough. We, we require more than that. We, and we expect India to help us at this difficult time. Mm -hmm. There are more than 2,500 students stranded in, in Afghanistan who are in, in the middle of their studies. Some of them were in second and third year. So if they don't come here, they, they don't resume and continue their studies, they're going to lose uh, whatever they had done in the past. Those two, three years are going to be wasted. So our request to the Indian government is to consider granting those people visas and consider bringing them to India. Uh, also, there were uh, almost 50,000 people who came here for medical treatment annually. Uh, there are people with, with fatal medical conditions. Uh, those people are willing to come here for, to, to continue with their medical treatment. So people who have uh, a long uh, history of travel to India should be considered. We consider India is, is our historic friend and a strategic ally. Uh, and in this difficult hour, uh, that, uh, f that hand of cooperation is, is expected by millions of Afghans to be extended by uh, the Indian government. Mm -hmm. So we hope that that, that policy would, uh, uh, would continue to evolve and change. Uh, and our needs would be considered. Mm -hmm. um, so talking about the situation in Afghanistan, um, the, the, we saw Taliban take over in, in uh, the month of August. Uh, since then, what has been the situation in terms of politically, uh, if you can give us any details uh, when it comes to Taliban take over, its impact on Afghanistan? Well, the past four months, almost four, four months, uh, we are going through uh, an economic, uh, social and political freefall. Uh, the gains of the past 20 years um, uh, have sadly been uh, reversed or being reversed as we go into the future. So there, there aren't uh, really any positive developments on, on many fronts, on political, social, economic. Uh, the hopes of the, of the Afghan people is that uh, we, the Afghans reach uh, uh, a stage where we would form an inclusive government where Taliban would love to shape a government which would be inclusive, which where we would have uh, a true and fair representation of the entire country. Uh, and women would be given their due rights, their rightful position in the Afghan society. They make up about half of our population and they should be treated with the right uh, and their deserved dignity and respect women should be allowed to go to school and, 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 and do their jobs. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are expectations uh, and, and we hope that uh, the international community uh, would continue to engage Taliban in order to uh, encourage them to take appropriate steps, steps required to put Afghanistan back on a trajectory where the people of that country deserve to live uh, a dignified life and not uh, um, uh, putting Afghanistan through uh, a stage where uh, it would become a safe haven and, and, and a hub for, for regional and international terrorism. So I hope that would not be repeated uh, and uh, there would be uh, steps taken uh, in order to avoid that. Mm. Uh, so my final question to you is uh, of the status of the Afghan embassy and globally uh, the status of the Afghan embassy is what has been the status uh, also about the financial position as well uh, any kind of financial crunches the embassies have been facing globally including here in Delhi. Um, well the past four almost four months uh, have been uh, difficult uh, emotionally uh, administratively uh, and financially. Uh, most of the staff around the world, and particularly here in India, they haven't been receiving any, any assistance uh, that we used to do in the past from Kabul. Uh, but the spirit of our staff uh, is high. They continue to serve uh, the Afghan community and the consular services are running as, as normal. Our focus in India has been now on, on three uh, main uh, elements we focus greatly on humanitarian and relief assistance, the wheat, uh, COVID vaccine, medicines, uh, warm clothes, uh, and things that uh, are greatly needed 
today in Afghanistan. So we are largely focusing on humanitarian assistance uh, to be ch channeled from India into Afghanistan in close coordination with the UN, relevant UN agencies, mm -hmm. with the World Food Programme, World, World Health Organization, and other uh, relevant authorities. Secondly, uh, our second focus has been on providing the required consular services. Mm -hmm. There are 100, over 100,000 Afghan citizens living in India uh, who require regular consular support, consular services. So our focus is not to uh, hinder, not to, to, to hamper or uh, delay those services. Mm -hmm. um, the services provision um, has been ensured to uh, our community. Uh, and third, uh, education support to our students. There are still over 15,000 Afghan students in India who require ongoing support. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is the third area of our main focus. So these three areas are areas of our main engagement, of course, together with other uh, diplomatic engagement with the host country here in India and other missions. Um, life has been uh, somewhat different, challenging, um, but uh, uh, we can't uh, pack up and, and, and leave. Uh, we have a moral obligation and responsibility towards our people uh, and towards our country to continue serving them. Well, thank you so much, uh, sir, for speaking to Vion and Afghanistan. It's something that has been dominating the agenda here in Delhi, as has been the region. Well, that was the Afghan envoy speaking to Vion on uh, the uh, Indian humanitarian support, uh, uh, of course, on uh, the, the change in Kabul and many other things. With video journalist Gopal Sidhan Sibul for Vion in New Delhi.